So Soundwave, eh? Great fella. That iconic synthy voice, his undying love for Megatron, and his big old tip window that births his wee tape robot children. An absolute Decepticon legend, if there ever was one. This representation of the big blue square boy is Netflix War for Cybertron Soundwave. And isn't he just a wee darling? This particular variation of Megatron's most capable minion had become quite the rarity. Have a look at those eBay prices. <sighs> Ouch! Thank Primus for good old Kapow Toys getting some import stock and not charging me the equivalent of a month's rent for this lovely wee guy. For me, it was Netflix Soundwave or nothing, as both the Siege and Legacy versions of Articular Boy transform into what can best be described as a big square brick of shite. Space Barge, what? Soundwave is and always will be a tape deck. It just makes sense. All his wee buddies transform into cassette tapes, so what are they meant to be in this Space Barge mode? Massive square obelisks with wee holes in them? Pash. Soundwave is a tape deck. End of story. Even that unofficial lamppost mode is better than that space barge nonsense. Oh, and just forget those bootleg Cybertronian boombox fan modes. Utter, utter pish. Anyway, this Netflix representation really knocks it out the park. He's definitely the big, blue, chunky G1 square boy we all remember. The red visor is so on point. Just look at that light piping. Apart from Kingdom Cyclonus, this just might be the best I've ever seen. In my opinion, the red is so much better than the piss yellow of the Siege and Legacy figure. I don't know if it's coming across, but I really hate those things. I know the yellow is accurate to the original toy, blah blah blah, I never had him. So, fuck him. The cartoon accurate red helps our boy to assert his dominance and look like a complete badass, as opposed to someone with a water sports kink. Articulation in Soundwave is just excellent. The only wee complaint I have about robot mode is the wee hollow backs of his forearms. Filling these in would have just put this guy over the edge into perfect, as opposed to just plain amazing. He still has those wee pop-out bits under his forearms left over from the siege mould. Ah, he can just pretend they're wee concealed blasters, so he can fool the Autobots into fake surrender, then shoot them in their goody two-shoes faces. Ah, sounds about right for Soundwave. He is superior after all. Transformation is simple enough, and takes many steps from the G1 toy. When you're done, you're left with this lovely wee Walkman. It's pretty sweet. The only complaints I have is this wee gap under the cassette tray, and the weapon storage. I would have loved a battery storage compartment like the original toy. But it's all good. Who's going to display him with his back facing forwards? Idiots, that's who. Speaking of accessories, you get his iconic shoulder cannon, a lovely wee round gun, and this mental foldy out one. Weird. The best use for this bit of drainage pipe is just to put it on the back of your Netflix Megatron and give him a G1 gun barrel on his back. That looks great. Speaking of accessories that look good with Megatron, just behold how good he looks with Laserbeak on his arm. Ah, Laserbeak. Unlike some of his other warriors, you never fail him. Folk never get tired of movie references, eh? That brings us neatly to the two included wee tapes with Soundwave. In my opinion, you get the two most iconic wee fellas that cut about with her big blue baddie. Those being Laserbeak and Ravage. Laserbeak is truly a great wee guy, with a really simple but effective transformation. I love all these wee paint apps, and that Decepticon logo on his head is just as cute as a button. I'm really glad he's got this wee tab on his underneath, as he struggles to clip onto Soundwave's arm with his tiny wee talons. Regardless, I just love swooshing him about, like that bit at the start of the 86 movie. It is great fun. Ravage, on the other hand, is a bit of a hot mess. I don't really know if his back is meant to extend out or if he should be left compact. It never really feels right extending it, 
as his butt rockets are stuck facing upwards. Either way, he's a bit rubbish. At least he's better than the G1 toy. <sighs> that is one skinny boy. I'm glad at least this wee fella is at least a three-dimensional object. As a whole package, Netflix Soundwave is just excellent and the best chug representation of your favourite blue bastard. You just can't get better without going for the masterpiece. I can't wait for Studio Series 86 Rumble to come out to reunite him with his big blue papa. I'll need to track down Ratbat as well, I suppose. Jeez, this guy is a bit of a money sink, eh? Anyway, what a great fella and a sure standout for your collection. You absolutely need to pick him up if you can find him and avoid having to sell a kidney to get him. Anyway, you guys have a great night.